I used to work as a manager at PricewaterhouseCoopers, a niche job in the ICT and management. Then I left when I was 32 and started my own business, developing process improvement software for blue chip companies, including my employer. But my comfort did not address a deep concern that I felt about the poverty I interacted with in our rural communities. I had grown up there, but in a different era. When I was young, farming was profitable. It paid our way through school. But now life seemed to be very different. In my church, to cite only one example, I was requested to take care of a young girl whose parents had died. I wondered how it was that an entire church congregation could not support one kid, yet everyone had land, they had cows, they had crops, and they had coffee, but they could not pay their way through a child's education. In response to such needs, I suggested, and the church elders agreed for us to start a series of practical seminars. And in each session, we examine, we would examine how to turn around the farming on their small scale farms. I don't know why they agreed to it, but we got started. Soon, we established why everyone was poor. Everything they did on their farms was a loss making venture. They called it mixed farming. In quotes, they kept a cow, they kept goats, they kept chickens, they grew fodder, they grew corn, grew beans and potatoes and other crops, including cash crops like coffee, all on a half acre plot of land. Just amazing. A friend of mine one time in a tour asked me what is mixed farming. And when I explained, they said that's the most amazing activity they have ever found on half an acre. Amazingly, among these farmers, no one kept records. They valued education for sure because they paid their um, children's school fees and borrowed and mortgaged themselves to be able to do this. But no one applied that education to their farming. No one quantified the inputs. No one tracked the outputs. And worst of all, no one depended on the farming activities for their livelihoods. They instead begged their grown-up children for support. That's how a program later on uh, developed called M-Pesa. And today, it's one of the most widely used applications. Even old people use it because it sends money. People use it to send money to their relatives in the rural areas. They sought subsidies from government and in times of crisis, they organized what they call Harambe's or a mobilization of the entire community around their need. How could they live this way? I asked, and it just showed um, how ignorant I had become. Um, I asked them, why do you send children to school but not expect the education to be of help to you? They told me that they educated children so that the kids could go away from the village so that they could find employment where they could get paid decent wages. The students who did not do well in school are the ones who stayed in the village, they told me. And those ones became a problem because after they settled there, they had to live on the same plot of land with their parents. So they made the land um, smaller. And uh, then them, themselves also joined their parents in practicing loss-making agricultural activities of the mixed farming lot. So soon in our seminars, we had a list of analyzed farming activities. We broke them down into what you put in, fertilizer, tilling, the plot itself, all of that, and found that all the activities were making losses. They spent three uh, dollars, three and a half US dollars per day to keep a cow, for example, and earned only one dollar from it. They grew a cob of maize for 10 cents and sold it for 40. They grew coffee and waited to be paid at the end of the season and usually at a lower rate than the input they had put in. So I asked them, so why do you farm? And uh, they countered, but what can we do? Question with a question. 
And I thought, maybe there's a way. And uh, in our sessions that we held on Saturday afternoons, when I could take a break from my work in Nairobi and drive the 120 kilometers uh, to the rural area, we tried to found, find out why. So we broke down the value chains into components and immediately began to locate the sources of losses. We found, for example, that one could make a profit growing fodder instead of raising cows. We found a farmer who used to grow yams at a profit by digging deeply into a hole and maneuvering it adequately. The members of the church now began to get very excited um, in this analysis and soon they managed to perform them on their own. They came up with a list of crops that they could grow at a profit along with documented protocols to be followed. Some examples was for example, to dig a trench of uh, half a meter uh, by three meters long and one meter wide and plant um, napier grass there with a lot of manure. And they harvested a lot. They found a protocol for growing, for digging a, a deep, one meter deep hole and, uh, and filling it uh, with enough manure and growing yams on it. So, these yams produced significantly better than the traditional method. So we had a large celebration about 18 months later as we harvested 100 kilograms of yams from one hole instead of the traditional two. And this method we adopted where we carry out an analysis, we develop a protocol and we carefully follow through the farming activity to the end became the basic framework through which our organization uh, supports farmers with tremendous improvements in all farming activities. The most recent success case has been that of increasing the output from a coffee tree. Uh, the national average uh, from a coffee tree is a production of two kilos and our farmers using this method are able now to get 20 kilograms from the same plant. Our work got noticed to begin with by the government. I was appointed to chair a water service board and became a recipient of a head, uh, of a head of state commendation in 2006, which was a surprise. Soon, international partners also noticed our work, including UNDP, and with their support, I developed a mechanism by visiting specific communities all around Kenya in uh, which we carefully analyzed the farming activities and developed a protocol for making it uh, successful. UNDP's response to my recommendation to use this method to establish mechanisms for supporting communities was surprising to me because they said it's good, but they do not get involved in the implementation of business support mechanisms. So we were left with no option uh, with all the motivation we had, but to establish the actual organizations that we needed to be able to do this work. Now, that made it much more complicated for me because we spent about two years trying to find money from donors and they were not making uh, very, very you know, great progress in that direction. Now, but those organizations today um, form what we call the Achille Group, and it is around it that we, we, our enterprise, our social enterprise runs. In 2010, I was nominated an Ashoka Fellow, and with Ashoka support, I progressively transitioned from attending um, to my, I, I transitioned from my work as a software developer into uh, working full-time for the social enterprise that I had created. Our intention was to raise funds from the, the donor family, but it did not work. But one, once we could not get any funding from donors, uh, we began to look for other options. I found out during that time that um, a program that I had been supporting on a pro bono basis 
uh, distributing sand-based water filters in Kisi became successful after the, the owners of the organization, Yakoda Aquaclara, registered the program for carbon credits. And my introduction to carbon credits at that time made me get wowed. I said, oh, maybe this is the way we should support our community development programs. You know, just to explain this for those of you who may not know what are carbon credits, they are secured from nearly all the activities that bring about development in a rural area, like water filtration, or uh, when, you, when you make a methane burning cook stove, or you distribute an energy efficient stove, or you plant a tree, all of those programs, if they are implemented within a registered program, such as with gold standard or with verified carbon standards, can result in carbon credits that can be sold and shared in a, um, in a structured way between the investors and the, the implementers and the community contributing them. So we went after carbon credit linked programs. And today we work with more than 100,000 farmers generating carbon credits from energy efficient stoves and using the money to subsidize the cost to the end user and to fund the distribution of fruit, nut trees, wood lots, and, uh, and, and, and other benefits. We have also developed a number of products that facilitate either production of life food improvement or uh, that generate income, like uh, a, a sand-based water filter. Uh, we make dairy concentrates that are enriched with Moringa oleifera. Uh, same thing with chicken feeds. We extract the bark of the Prunas Africana tree and make capsules that reduce prostate enlargements in men. We also do high capping score coffee. That means selectively um, improve coffee from a particular area and export it directly to the US. We have a partner or we make herbal drinks and so on. So our carbon credit linked tree planting program also is an income source for the young people in a community who can go into the forest to plant. So this method now is the way our business runs. We are now at the scaling stage in our social enterprise with secure long-term partnerships in coffee marketing and agronomy improvement funded through carbon credits. We also have the partnerships to enlist more than 1 million farmers in tree planting activities around the main water towers in Kenya and in the Ruenzori area in Uganda and in an area called Kayanza in Burudi. And then we also are finding partners. We have a partnership that are taking us to Cameroon, same work. So indeed carbon credits represent a better much more sustainable source of income to fund uh, wealth creation in rural areas. And the best news is that carbon credit linked programs can be scaled across Africa and all over the developing world.